I recently got a comment asking if I still use my Bronco, and the answer is yes. However, the answer is also not like I want to. When I got the Brompton, I really had this idea of how I wanted to use this bicycle. And what I began to find out really quickly is the idea of how I wanted to use it and what I could use my A-line for had some gaps and I had to find a way to close those gaps rather quickly. So the very first thing that I purchased with my Brompton A-line was a front carrier block. That front carrier block allowed me to then buy a pre-2016 tea bag to now have the ability to carry things. The A-line does not have a rear rack, something you know when you purchase it, but you don't realize the flexibility that the Brompton really has when you combine it with something like carry. Um, there are some awesome front bags for the Brompton and leather and all type of materials. However, if you don't have the front carrier block, then you're already um, having some issues there. I'm halfway through, probably a little bit more halfway through to work. It's been super chill, really smooth. I just gotta work on breath control. So I went on and spent roughly, I think, $35 with shipping for the front carrier block. And then I bought my bag. It was roughly about $80 and it was in incredible condition. Thank you again, Matt, for that. And overall, I have now finally started to enjoy my riding experience on the Brompton A-Line. The twitchiness that happens when you first get on the Brompton um, with the adjustments that you have to make in your mind as far as how quick the bike can move is something that the front carrier block and a well-loaded bag really changes. Um, it really shifts that from being something that doesn't feel as natural to something that feels like, yep, I've done this before. And I don't know in my particular research if there's been other Brompton owners that have experienced that, but anytime that I'm at bike meetups, I am certain to let other bike enthusiasts test it and they immediately know what I'm talking about. Um, there's just a different ride on the Brompton that I can't quite explain until you get on it. Um, other things that I have looked to adjust or upgrade, I should say, is my lighting. I did get some just cheap lights off of Amazon to make sure I'm seen, but I do want to upgrade that. I also um, need to upgrade my tires. And so I am looking to do that. If you have any uh, recommendations, please drop them below in the comments. I would love to hear what you would recommend for a more urban experience as far as maybe some dirt paths and gravel here and there um, as far as getting around the city. There are three things that I would say that anybody looking to own a Brompton should be looking into. And these three things aren't necessarily the bike or the company's fault, but it's something that we should know as owners, as it is very different than, I don't want to say any other bike on the market, but any other bike on the market. The Bromptons tend to hold their value well. However, the A-Line, I don't particularly see the base level holding that much value. And so I spent roughly about $1,100 on the Brompton A-Line. And after I finished doing upgrades, probably upwards of about $200 to $300, I certainly can see how I'm maybe lucky if I get $600. There's just too much value in the other models that Brompton is putting out for me to get anywhere close to what I paid for it. On top of the fact that the used market isn't what it was during COVID where you really had some great value in used Bromptons. Now I feel like things are starting to uh, dwindle a bit as far as Brompton resale values. The next thing I would also recommend is what you will be doing with the bike in the future, not necessarily just the right now. And when I say the future, I mean further than a year out. We moved from a car centric area of Richmond to a more trail oriented development. And 
now I'm very concerned that the three gears that I have on this bike just aren't enough for me to truly experience Richmond in a way that I could just take my bike and climb up some of the steepest hills uh, in Virginia. And a lot of that is due to me being out of shape, quite frankly, but then also um doing research there's people going as far as changing their chain to make their climb more accessible and again on the Brompton it's it's tough to climb hills I really take my hat off to those who uh, are able to do it because it is not for the weak the last thing I would say is to be mindful of how you want to use it in public there are times that um, I feel weird taking my Brompton into places um, or I don't consider um, how um, I'll store it. There's been some times where I'm like asking people, hey, can you watch this? Because I'm just not cognizant of um, where I'll be when I arrive. Um, for instance, I have taken it to Charlotte on a few occasions and I took it to a conference while I was in Charlotte. And while it was great to be able to hop on and hop off, um, a conference can get really hectic. And so those are one of the moments that I wish I didn't have to be cognizant of where my Brompton was. And I couldn't just lock it up. I had to literally pick it up and take it everywhere I went. And so um, having that experience really made me uh, think a little bit deeper about the convenience of having bikes that you can just lock up outside or just use a key like some of your e-bikes. Um, yeah. With all that said, I don't regret my purchase of the Brompton by any means, but I certainly recommend anyone looking at the A-Line to truly consider if you could wait just a little bit longer before you purchase because it might just make a difference. Till next time, cut loose.